Yo guys, what's going on? Creative Inky here. I just want to say thank you guys for all the support you guys have been giving me. All the subscribers, all the likes, and right before we start this tutorial, I just want to say if you guys did enjoy this video, please make sure to smash that like button. If we could hit 25 likes on this video, that'd be amazing. Now let's get started. I want you so bad. Alright guys, so as you can see, Action has got a complete makeover. The home screen and everything else looks a bunch more modern, a lot more sleek. Everything looks really nice. So let's just start off with the video recording tab. You have your keybind here, which I have set to default, which is F9, to stop and start recording. That's pretty simple. Now you have four recording modes. You have gaming mode, active screen, selecting region, and window or browser. So with the gaming mode, basically if you're playing a game such as Minecraft, which it works well on, Gary's Mod, CSGO, it's going to automatically rec uh, record that without you really having to select that game, if that makes sense. Now we have active screen. Basically it's going to record your entire desktop as I'm doing right now, so my entire desktop is being recorded. Now we have selected region. Basically what this is going to do is, say if you only want to record a specific part of your screen. So let's say I want to record this little blue area, I can record exactly that, and only that part. Then we have window or browser. Basically what this does is, say if you're an Agario or Slither IO player, this is going to work really well for you because now you don't have to select your region with this of where you want to record, it's just going to automatically record that easily. Now we have file format, you have AVI, MP4, and if you have an NVIDIA graphics card, you're also going to have MP4, NV, ENC. This is basically a hardware acceleration, so it's going to make your rendering times a lot faster if you have an NVIDIA graphics card. If you don't, MP4 works just as fine. <coughs> For video size, you have 1080p, 720p, so on and so forth. With YouTube nowadays, most people enjoy 1080p quality, as most internets can actually be able to load 1080p without any issues, so I personally record at 1080p. Video frame rate. Now, some people may be confused about this, so I'm going to try and help this. 60 frames per second, basically, is a lot smoother. It's not as shaky, it's a lot smoother, everything looks better, and also it's just much more appealing to the eye. However, it does take more space on your computer because it has to load more frames into one second of a video, if that makes sense. So, if you can't really load 60, try 30. 30 works just as fine, and that's what everyone used to do before. Now for duration. In case you're confused about what this does, really all it is, it's so you can set out how long you want your uh, recording to go. So say if you only want to record 15 minutes, you can click the up arrow until you're at 15 and it's only going to record 15 minutes. After that, it's going to stop and you have to start it again. Now for your microphone, you have do not record, always record, and push to talk. If you select do not record, your voice is not going to be recorded at all. If you click always record, it's going to be recording as it is right now for me. And if you click push to talk, you can set a hotkey, which is basically a button. So whenever you press that button, your mic is going to record. However, if you let go of it, it's going to stop. Now we have webcam. This is something that has been completely revamped in action. And it's really nice. You guys are going to see that more in depth later on in the video. Right now, you can just select whichever one you have. So that way, it's going to record. Under live streaming. Uh, now you have uh, many different uh, services, such as Twitch, YouTube, Livestream, Ustream, and more. So one thing I can suggest is do not give your stream key to anyone. This is going to grant access to your account basically without any issue and they can stream to your account. So make sure you don't do that. And then here you can set your video size again and your video frame rate. Now we have audio recording. This is basically if you want to do commentaries or voiceovers. So say if you don't want to record any video but you just want to record your voice, you can do that. All you have to do is click here. And then you can select it to be recorded as MP4 audio or wave, wav, however you like to say it. And then your microphone, you can change that again. And your duration, you can change that again. And you can also select allow multi-channel audio recording. So if you have something, a third-party program such as Skype in the background, it'll record that as well. Now we have benchmarking. Most people don't really use this and it's pretty much useless. But really it's just to see like how your computer can handle. As you can see, it shows your system specs. It shows how your computer can do while recording. Screenshots, this is a nice one. So, say if you want to take a screenshot right now. So if I press, if I go here, and I press F11. Pretty much I've already taken a screenshot. 
if I go here oh my bad F12 so if I click F12 there we go as you can see I just took a screenshot it's pretty good quality everything looks nice so that's good now we have general settings for general settings you can set from I believe it's 17 different languages I'm not sure and then here you can set your application things these are things that you can really mess around with yourself to your own personal liking now we have video recording settings you can set your video quality to low, normal, high, or ultra. I personally use ultra because I want my videos to look the best. So yeah. Then we have bitrate. I keep this at 100%. It just, it looks a lot better basically. If you set that lower, it's, it's going to look more choppy I suppose if that makes sense. Input rage, I leave this at default. And then you have use multi-core recording. If you have four cores or more, you can click use multi-core recording and everything is going to be a lot faster, a lot better while you're recording and you're going to have better frames. So that's a nice thing. Then we have overlay graphics. Basically, if you want to put a face cam overlay, you could do that. All you have to do is select a file, click use overlay graphics and position it wherever you want. Top left, top centered, etc. As I said a little bit before in the video, here's where the webcam has been completely revamped in action. So as you can see here, you can select how you want to be recording your webcam, if you want it to be in the corner, or if you want it to be the full screen. So as you can see, you can do not record, record your resolution, your video size, positioning, etc. Now is where things get nice. You have chroma key, which has been added to action. Now instead of having to edit it in your own editing software, now you can do it straight from the program, which is really nice. So all you have to do really is click use chroma key, it's going to tick it. And then whatever color your green screen or blue screen, whatever you have is, you click this little, it looks kind of like a syringe, I guess, or like a paint droplet. So you click it and then you can select whatever the color your green screen is, and it's going to automatically remove it from the background. So that's nice. Now we have audio settings. Here's where you can edit all of your audio, such as record system sounds, allow multi-channel audio recording, select what headphones you're using. Uh, your bitrate etc now for microphone settings you can select your monitor microphone i'm using a blue yeti and then you can say your volume i started at 22 percent because it seems to be the best for me and then you can record your microphone into a separate audio track if you want to edit it in audacity or something if you have something they don't like you could do that and for audio balance i keep this at default all you have to do is click right here on this little slider tool and it shows reset to default settings and there you go now it's reset to default now if we go here to HUD settings, this is something you can also mess around with by yourself. It's basically just want, if you want to show like the recording thing in the top right, you can do that or not. One thing that they have added is actually really nice, show free disk space. Right under the recording it shows how much disk space you have, so right now I have 529 gigabytes, and it's always nice if I'm recording for a long time, I can see how much space I have and if I need to clear out something. And now second to last we have export settings, you can use hardware acceleration, and as I said, NVIDIA, NVENC, it basically is going to make your video encoding, which is rendering, a lot faster. Last but not least we have hotkey settings, here's where you can set any button that you want to say start recording, things like that. So as you can see, if I, say if I want to start recording to insert, I press insert, and I have to have my mouse over it, and then you can set that that way. So, as you can see, Action has got a bunch of new updates. If you guys did enjoy this tutorial, make sure to leave a like and comment down below if you have any questions, or if you just want to comment down, go ahead. If, if you disliked it, smash that dislike button if you did not.